मंजू सो विल स्टार्ट या वी कैन स्टार्ट गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन टुडे वी हैव अ गेस्ट स्पीकर सर आर कृष्ण कुमार who is an expert in information security practicing or consulting advisory and auditing he is a seasoned professional with 25 years of work experience in it industry uh, mainly information security and service management his uh, experience uh, includes those stints in wipro ibm uh, thomson reuters tu vesut he is certified in iso 27001 uh, then uh, he is an itv ITIL V3 expert ISO 9001 QMS ISO 22301 and he has uh, 3000 plus man hours of third party or certification uh, audits to his credit and uh, um, so uh, we are going to listen to him talking about the information security and audit practices uh, thank you mr krishna kumar for uh, uh, this uh, the time you have given to us over to you thank you thank you much and thank you all for participating let me uh, say good evening first before starting up and this session i am not so sure whether i will be able to cover each and every subject what everyone is expecting for but it's my try for see whether i can uh, cover some of the points i hope i am audible loud and clear yeah 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 thank you very much thank you for coming me so information security and audit practices uh, like uh, uh agenda would be just see the overview uh, what are the evaluations methods uh, which has been followed uh, then directly go to uh, iso 27001 because i have been uh, subject on 27k which we say also say as isms then audit and uh, normal case studies based on some of the uh, iso clauses and the uh, control points uh, it will be generally a uh, normal uh, discussion like uh, where we will be say which all we will the customer points which they have expressed during during the discussion without naming them or them i will be just sharing some points uh, we will have a discussion through or a case study or how do we approach during this audit that's what uh, we meant over there in the last Uh, session of this uh, uh, session uh, information security uh, by all means uh, it is nothing but to protect the valuable assets uh, from threat attack errors and from nature this is the core objective of information security and this has been agreed by all information security standards generally for an information security evaluations Uh, two standards are prominent today nowadays in the market one is top 2 type 2 and another one is iso 27001 which most people would be aware of uh, i would not take much about uh, the deep into the subjects of soc 2 i'll be more covering about 27k only uh, soc 2 type 2 is an assessment and it is technically an attestation report Uh, generally done by an outside auditor, uh, which is more recognized or being uh, predominantly to one set of global practices from US level. Uh, whereas for 27K, it is an audit. It is a certification process, and it is agreed and accepted by the national bodies of 192 countries. Uh, this is the primary difference between a SOC 2 uh, and a 27K. SOC 2 always remains as an assessment. Uh, 27K always remains as an audit process. uh we also say 27k as isms the core components of isms are process people and technology uh processes it covers like policies what are the defined policies for each process the process levels it can be the process levels can be in deep inside to the work instruction level do's and don'ts also starting from the policy level next to the uh, process level then the procedure level guidelines work instructions and we can do up to the do's and don'ts that's what it is being covered in a normal process for each and every process process means here it is meaning but the departments in an organization in each organization there are five standard departments will be there one will be the top management uh, then the hr that mean uh, then the core business area uh, attached with sales and the uh, production or operation department then it department these are the core areas 
then people uh, it says about the people function also uh, what all the organizational structure the roles and responsibilities it covers with uh, technology in hardware and software also uh, every every uh, what is a everything can be put under the bucket of hardware or software that is what the uh, isms uh, clearly says about and it all falls under uh, only on these three subjects process people and technology uh in information security uh, what are the core uh, components or uh, uh, what is it the concentration goes in software is security availability integrity confidentiality and privacy these are the four subjects whereas in 27k it always revolves around confidentiality integrity and availability security and privacy are sub factors of the confidentiality that is how the 27k approach or means work around uh just going to uh, soc2 generally refers to the coso principles or coso controls whereas for iso 27000 we have defined controls uh, with clause domains and sub controls controls around 114 other uh generally or not all controls can be opted by the organization so for choosing up what is suitable or best required for the business uh it is the statement of applicability uh, which has been defining the chosen controls which has been used for the 27k in general uh, soc2 assessments also take the soa uh, from somewhat a copy wherever i have seen it or in the experience i have seen it would be easy for them also to adopt some of the controls or they have adopted the same fashion what it is in addition to saying about the coso controls uh, am i loud and clear or you want to be somewhat loud or slow i think perfectly fine krishna thank you so uh, as i said about isms there are four clauses clauses 4 to 10 domains is a.5 to a.80 uh, controls of a domains a.5 to a.18 it is 114 controls uh let us say uh, about the audit practices till now i just said about the uh, information security in the higher subject uh, comparison of soc2 and uh, iso 27000 which are two information security practices which is for currently followed uh directly going to 27k audit practice uh, there are two stages stages in uh, 27k audit one is stage 1 and stage 2 what generally practiced in stage 1 is process verification in process verification what it has been looked upon is the process documents the audit and the audit ready is ready the process document it is it's more important to emphasizing on how the departments function to attain the information security goal as required by the business this is the first factor which has been looked upon in stage 1 in stage 2 it is a verification of how this has been implemented and the records are collected as evidence to assure or to confirm this audit is being passed or not generally in stage 2 is more about a practical means whereas in stage 1 it always remains as a theoretical part and some part of stage 1 also covers uh, some required controls like that of readiness especially on the information in the network part it is just looked upon then site readiness the site readiness is nothing but about the administrative controls what have been followed in the office premises uh, fire exit and safety is also one of the factor which may be looked upon by an auditor during stage 1 generally a stage 1 to stage 2 audit it is a minimum 30 days is required and a maximum of 6 months has been allowed after completing a stage 1 audit in during this uh, 30 days to 6 months if at all area of concern has been raised by the auditor generally in area of concern is a not say statement which is uh, in most of the uh, what is a <coughs> uh, organization certification bodies currently use it for iso 27k because iso 27k is more about in a higher level rather than that of 9k or 14k because it is a combination of multiple standards together or multiple controls together so uh, in most uh, uh, certification bodies they adopt a method called instead of area of concern as a as a minor non conformity or a process improvement points which will be raised in the stage 1 audit and from a stage 1 audit 
generally what the process follows by most of the certification body is that there will be a back, back end office uh, activity where the pro head head of certification and other functions will be verifying the points uh, given by the auditor on the site verification it also calculates about the number of days or number of hours of uh, uh, auditor may have to work upon it also calculates about some exceptions which should be followed in a uh, in an industry consider that if you are going to work, uh, audit a banking company a financial institution those conditions may not be applicable for uh, if you are going to audit a pharmaceutical company or it may be an industry so those conditions will be highlighted by the auditor by the in the stage one for recommendations to calculate the man hours and other factors which has been required for stage two so this period or the time interval which will be start from 30 days to maximum of six months it has been mutually agreed and discussed by the uh, client and the certification body this is how it has been functioning i am not going deep inside uh, point by point if at all any question is there for this one we can speak discuss then proceed further okay silence i just take it up granted uh, generally in audit practice what an auditor as an auditor what it look about on 27k is that whether the company have properly defined about the asset management policy uh, it also look, uh, uh, looks upon information classification policy. How is the policy defined? What are the process which has been uh, adopted in the information classification? Uh, then it, about the network security uh, and infrastructure security. Uh, mobile device uh, teleworking and encryption, uh, which is A.6 uh, A and A.10. And uh, these are the points in more look up, look, looked upon after this uh, network and infrastructure security part. In audit practice, we look upon in human resource security policies, especially on the background verification and the terms of uh, employment and exit. These are the uh, few factors. In addition to that, NDA will be uh, NDAs and the uh, concern. Concern as per the 1948 Act of uh, Factories Act and all will be looked upon how it has been man managed and maintained. So in generally in an audit practice, an auditor looks upon the higher level policies like this, especially on the stage one, and the nitty gritties or the uh, break events about it in the stage two. Next comes about the physical security policy, how it has been. And one more factor is about the tailgating uh, is about this. Uh, the other policy which will be looked upon is success control, uh, incident management and business continuity. There is uh, one more policy. Generally, if it is software industry, a, a software development uh, life cycle for policies and procedure or the work procedure will be the looked upon. If it is other operation industry, consider that as I said in the banking. Uh, the banking level uh, there or the financial institution, there the factor will be looked upon how their operational level it is being the process and what is the information being flowed from the input level to the output level and how this uh, process has been defined and how it has been maintained. So based on the industry, it changes. So that's why I have not mentioned about that point over here. It is a generic point or it has been subjective to the organization level. So in overall, in the generally in an audit practice, a uh, few of the policies what will be looked upon by an auditor is of this level. Uh, I have a few questions uh, like this. Uh, do someone feel that there is the question is something like, do you feel that year on year we have audits each time the auditor gives A or NC or some of the NCs? Do you feel so? Or do you feel so? Why do auditors give or why don't they give an all NCs at one stretch? Uh, and so that in future it will be zero NCs or uh, zero non conformity. Or do someone feel that the auditors are treating us unfairly? Uh, I hope so many of them will be having this kind of questions, uh, especially who have been regularly facing the audit. Uh, if it is so, if someone can openly come up with, to discuss this one, we will have a few more points coming up. It will be more interesting to discuss and have a session rather than to be only a one-way communication, I hope so. Do anyone feel so, this kind of questions? Uh, it's okay, it happens.
uh, it is that is how it takes life. Is it how is it so? Okay, so uh, I hope some are having a point to be the factor. So, what is the primary reason being that is that the bibliography generally in 27k 2001-2013 edition. Uh, this is the bibliography which has been given uh, as on uh, what is the auditor's experience exchange session, which generally happens in all certification body. Uh, this subject will be continuously discussed during the experience exchange. And year on year, uh, what happens is that the auditor always sees that whether he has been looking upon every point very clearly and precisely, or he is looking upon the points which has been required by the 27K aspect very correctly. So that, that is the primary reason uh, it comes that we have continuously one or the other improvement areas coming up on or opportunity for improvement or observations or a minor or major non-conformity comes up on. So in 2007-2001-2013 version, uh, this is the bibliography which has been given. It refers about six directives. And the primary being 27,002-2013 version. Now that has been upgraded to uh, 2013 uh, version to 2022 version. In earlier version of 2002, uh, we had uh, approximately around 27 reference documents uh, and especially says about the security techniques and code of practice for information security. So uh, if you go through these 27 reference documents, at least once in a quarter or once in a thing, there would have been multiple points which arises. And by when you uh, go through that slowly, the auditor always have some kind of points to be raised with a client or a customer. That's what actually happens. Now the latest version is 2002 version, which is released on February 2022. And this bibliography has 59 references I would not be going through all the 59 reference documents because it will be very tough to cover at this point. So let us see some of the, uh, what has been done in 27 to 22 version. Uh, it says about cloud practices being, uh, cloud services practice being incorporated in the, uh, from 27.017 to 27.001 audit structure. Uh, it says about privacy also. Privacy was one of the points which has been already there in A.18.1.4 of ISO standard. Whereas it was saying more about maintaining the privacy in the uh, organization level and the information security level. As GDPR and other privacy factors have come into picture, 27701 have played a different role altogether and brought in many controls to control uh, privacy of the customers not business, especially on the customers. And there is uh, many things which have been uh, all allowed there in 27.701, which has been incorporated under the 27.0022 version. And for energy, it was not touch-based, that uh, vertical was not touch-based, that has also been added, that is 27.019. Then about telecommunication organization uh, for 27.011 was not there, uh, been only independent reference over there. This is also, these points are also been incorporated in 27.002 as a code of implementation and for further. I'm not just taking around for the uh, bits and points over there. I'm just saying about the reference of this. And 27.799 for the health industry, which is also been incorporated with 27.22 version. So as time passed by after March or by April, uh, it has been the auditors started looking upon 27, 22 version also, and how this has been brought into practice and it has been followed. So uh, a highlight, uh, uh, what Mr. is the major Krishna, point over there? Hello? Oh, yeah, Mr. Krishna, yeah. uh, can you please go back to the previous slide if I can ask you a question here? Please, this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now what I understand is that 27,002, the latest one is in the year of 2022, this yeah. year, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Now, as we all know, the 27,002 is a guideline yeah. which is getting used for implementing the 114 controls referred in the annexure A of my 27,001, yeah. correct? Yeah. Now, 27,001 has not yet gone for updation, correct? Yeah. The yeah. latest one has not been released. Not enough. Very good. Now, when you say that this 27,002 2022 document has been already started referred by the auditors, yeah. 
I'm missing a link. How can no, it one be? Minute. Okay. One minute. Sure. Not acceptable, Ramesh. Sorry. Not agree. No, no. First, first, Adupu, sir, my question is that, sir, go back to that. I listen to you, Mr. Krishna, but let me yeah. complete my question. Yeah, sure. uh, go okay. back to that slide again. Okay. That slide. Yeah. Now, it is talking about cloud services. It's okay. uh, You are talking about the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is getting covered as part of my 27,000 on actuary controls. So, okay. so uh, I, I'm trying to be with me, please. I'm trying to at least listen uh, from you that what is the basis for this ISO where they have not even touched the touched the auditable standard for me, wherein okay. Okay. they had come out with the guideline at this stage and the auditor started looking at it. If I'm a practitioner, how am I going to really uh, show it to you is my question. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, if you see uh, earlier 27 to 2013 version, it was code of practice and implementation level. That was the heading given. Okay. What I would like to say now, the point is as you objectively said, uh, what is the basis? Yes. It is as you know very well. Uh, it is the standard is been evolved, or all these standard procedures or controls is regularly evolved. And it is been saying that what are the points on the positive and the negative. It has been reviewed regularly. It is not that one fine morning it has been said that all auditors will follow this one. Yeah, it has been put into role and it has been there. That's what I was saying about the auditors' experience exchange and auditors' feedback. I don't know whether you know about this comments which has been gone. I hope during the early discussion also you were also being discussing about few comments, inputs, and all. And it has been regularly discussed and followed. So, like that, this is also uh, it's about looked upon. It is not saying that, yeah, you should practice there because as you said correctly, 27001, it is not modified, but it is should be brought into picture. Whereas in 27002-2013 version, there are ample questions which have been rising up. Okay, there are gaps or which has to be filled up. Generally, an auditor answers to that based on his experience or based on the client's query or the customers or individual query, it has been addressed. Whereas it is up to the mark or it's up to the giving up the expectation, it is really a question other than until you have a collective resource or you bring it into a forum, we may not know what the uh, objective is getting met over there. And one point I would like to say is the 27002-2013 version, it is more about a code of practice. Whereas in 27002, uh, it says about information security controls. The name they it's been slightly rechanged, and how to bring into practice and how to bring into evolve that one. That is what being looked upon. I hope I am answering your question. Uh, it may not be admittable the, at one fine morning. But I, I'm with you. I, you, 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 you said so. I'm yeah. not uh, trying to argue and waste no, 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 But at the point session. point here is that. Yeah. I'm trying to post this question in every forum, yeah. right? For the ISO practitioners, management system, gurus, and so on. Okay. Still, I am not able to appreciate the thought process of ISO that wherein they have not updated the auditable standard. Yes, wherein yes. Is, they straight a... away gone ahead with the 27,000 implementation. Now, mm -hmm. there is a big, big gap. We all have a tough time in the organizations to even explain to the management. Today, okay. the cloud security plays a vital role. It swapped the entire concept of 27001 you are talk you talked about physical security i already noted down now yeah. there is no concept of data center what am i going to do with those controls right now so there is a lots of thought process need to get in in terms of strengthening my 27001 auditable and certifiable standard once when i firm it up based on it how to really implement it as a guideline you call it as code of practice or you call it as an information security controls still the document validity remains the same as a guideline document however this is not going to be an auditable and certain standard i am not i am not really understanding and i am with you that you may not be having an answer here as i do not have many of the forums does not have yet an answer adupu sir i am sure you will agree with me because you are also from the same background right Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Go ahead. Thank yeah, you. welcome. So uh, I would not say much about it. Let me say I have not seen uh, whether it has been at, let me say I'm not able to say at this point whether it has been anywhere it has been mentioned as a requirement or not. Okay. It I is not a requirement. It, it's not a requirement. 
no uh, that i was what i said i currently i have to see uh, once again go back and see whether or go uh, deep inside one by one in the due course of time after this session. so you, you are talking about 37002 right yeah yeah of course no no be with me be with me we don't have to break our head i am confident okay. in making the statement it's not a requirement per se it's not an auditable standard it's just a guide it is guide. not an auditable standard but right. uh, compared to 2013 version uh, 2002 right. version it's an, uh, a real name shift itself has happened that's, that's fine there sir are, there are many ambiguities i don't deny to it but always uh, okay. open discussion have, and, and uh, what, the why, why i opened it up with you is that since you said that auditor started using i am really scared now yeah, okay? because yeah, if no. i my any of the auditor is going to tell me Ramesh, have you started implementing 27002? Believe me, my answer would be totally different. That's why I want to be careful. Great, sir. I Thank know, you, sir. No, sir. I, I, I would not say that it is that in this forum that this, this sector is being starting. I cannot say that one. It is just a normal session which I would like to say here. Many things will be on a hidden path. Okay. So uh, here uh, comes about this one. I, I don't know whether uh, I, I will not be able to fully cover about all the bits and points over there. Uh, in high level, it says about the control type, plus four, it says about control type, which was, uh, as uh, many have been having a question, uh, the control type earlier, it was been open to the company. Now it has been saying about the preventive, corrective and defective type. You should, uh, there should be some kind of classification or some kind of addressing should be uh, accordingly mapped. This has been recommended over there. And in information security applicability also, it has been said that uh, what you are going to do, it has been identified, protected, responded, or recovered. And in operational capabilities also, governance, threat, and vulnerability uh, factors has been come into picture, including that of as ma management of assets too. And in security domain, governance and ecosystem and protection. So if uh, I would rather say that there are some resembling activities where uh, you see there have been some kind of uh, uh what is your overlap or if you see the domain level some uh, things which saw to earlier if you if someone had an option to go back and see the soft to coso and other factors there are some kind of overlap which is happening actually with 27 2002 22 version february edition there are some kind of resemblance or some kind of overlapping which is going to come so make it as uh, has been so easy or uh, to be an understandable factor that's what i or personally feel so or during a discussion i could uh, come to an understanding among the auditors uh, so what are the newly introduced factors uh, it's about the threat intelligence uh, earlier in uh, in 8 or 12 uh, especially for the it security and other factors uh, threat intelligence was not being at all a uh, question over there uh, how it is going to be addressed so it's a proactive or a reactive factor uh, an auditor should look upon the information security for cloud services, how when you are just moving your services to cloud, what are the security factors, which is especially from the data level to your process level, what all been going to the in-house or from the on-site to the cloud premises, how we are going to uh, act, uh, ensure its security. This is nowhere uh, being a subject that is also slowly getting addressed into it. Uh, earlier, uh, BCP or business continuity was more into uh, organization level, that was the general understanding. Whereas 22.0.22 version of February, it says more about ICT readiness. Let us concentrate BCP on the, on the ICT readiness only. That's what the subject is saying about. Physical security monitoring. Uh, physical security was being a factor, whereas uh, in most cases, the monitoring aspect is also taken into consideration during the audit factor because many uh, people uh, spread their uh, experience through uh, either through service management or information security or through SOC levels of two level. Uh, the security monitoring is being uh, subjectively looked upon, whereas it was not in a subject during the 2013 version, whereas 2022 says clearly about we have to see about it. Configuration management, it's uh, what is it? It's, it's a life cycle life level uh, for starting from the bringing into the system to the retire level. Information left, uh, deletion also, uh, the retire part has been nowhere discussed in the A.8 asset management and asset uh, data level. Uh, that is also a factor coming out over there in 2022 version. Data masking, uh, this is all more about the privacy and the data level protections which is being discussed here in 22K. 
uh, data leakage prevention, monitoring activities in technology. Generally, monitoring activities in technology is followed by a uh, few on premises servers and other factors and uh, more of an alerting tool is been uh, automatic alerting tool is been a service which has been rendered by the cloud services which has been configured and practiced but how it has been uh, practically followed and how what all the factors to be considered this has been uh, more looked about in the 22k version of 27002 uh, web filtering was nowhere uh, been uh, application security was been said but what about web filtering uh, there were been a question which is a gap level during audit practices which is used to be asked. Uh, those points also have been brought in and secure coding. Secure coding was been there in 8.14.2.12, 14.2.7, uh, it has been discussed over there. But it is getting deep inside how, what all the repository, not only the repository factors, what all the quality factors also can be brought in addition to the secure coding. Uh, this is more uh, deeply discussed and uh, shared in the 2002-22 version. Uh, any points which you would like to discuss here or we'll just proceed further? Okay, I take the silence as a go through. Uh, as I said about uh, 22 uh, version of 27002 version, it says about uh, it has increased from 27 uh, references to 59 versions. Earlier version of 22.02.013 were not been including of 9K because 9K we always consider as a mother of uh, ISO standard, but uh, in general practice, it will not be called for in 27K. But references and other points have been asked to look upon for 9K also. Uh, NIST standard of 80, 837 is also being looked upon. Uh, OWASP is nowhere been uh, been a reference material for earlier 27002. ITL references has also been brought uh, an open standard development and uh, 30K uh, for ships and marine is also been a reference standard if it's all a shipping industry is getting audited uh, or what all the references should be looked upon is being touch base in the 22K version. Uh, other new thing is that uh, there have been some gaps generally observed in 2013-22002 version, which is about the auditing the assets, physical access, uh, network part system application and software development, uh, which was totally into the auditor's experience. So there are some clarity which has been brought here. Uh, that's what actually I felt as a co-individual and uh, during discussion with some auditors felt so. Uh, then next about this control types and cyber security. Cyber security. Uh, it was lying as, as a, what you say, it is more about uh, some part of CCNA or networking troubleshooting and some part which has been in an open area. Cyber security is also getting introduced uh, into the uh, standard levels. And uh, one of the important factors is that BCP, which was more about the uh, business level or it was taken into the overall, overall level, uh, it has been now constrained to ICT and its readiness and its exercise and how Testing has been provided and it's evidence, uh, not just that evidence, most probably it may look upon the technical factors also. Uh, data deletion is uh, as per the statutory and legal requirements of the land is being brought more precise over there in the uh, 22 version. And PAA and cloud services is also uh, added to 27K version. As such, the certification standard remains as 27,001 only, whereas uh, the implementation as it is being uh, slowly being brought to zero out the negative factors or the gaps which has been there already prevailing in the code of practices has been slowly into the information security control level, which has been looked upon in the latest version. Uh, cloud service provider security uh, remains uh, as being not covered in that control 22K. Uh, so, any questions? Uh, if it is not so, we will just go through some case studies as an audit practices we look upon. Uh, there are a few things, subjects, uh, let especially say about the organization rules and responsibilities and authorities. Generally, in audit practice, when you go upon this key point, organization rules, uh, the, the auditor will look upon how the organization chart is being defined. Uh, 
uh, how the roles and uh, responsibilities are being clearly mapped against the RACI chart, uh, and how what, what are the implementation factors which is being followed. Uh, these are the general case uh, which has been looked upon as an important factor. Uh, if any points which you would like to discuss, we can have a discuss because uh, it is during discussion we will be able to share points. We can take it as a case study or we'll go to the next point. Sir, a okay. small query, small yeah, query, yeah. Advocate Lima here. Yeah. Is there any time frame fixed for compliances of the audit? Compliances of the audit in the sense? I when it comes that, to compliances, means uh, whatever are the observations in audit, those needs to be rectified according to my understanding. Yeah. So, is there any specified time period that uh, uh, generally that is being uh, in period? the solo discussion of a certification board? You see, in the certification body, when they are getting uh, uh, recognized by the AB accreditation body, they define some set of rules. Some company uh, general uh, thing flat rule is that three to four weeks. Three to four weeks is being generally followed in most of the certification board. Okay, okay, thank you. And, hey, sir, can I clarify? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this Adapo. Yeah. Hey, sir, in our practice, you know, where we do ISMS audit for the companies, in case at the end of the audit, if we find a minor non-conformity. A certification will be issued with the condition that they should immediately minor non conformity within three months' time and keep the evidences for the verification the next time. If it is a major non conformity, as decided by the client and the auditor, at that time we stop the audit and tell the time to remediate that major non conformity within a month and come back to CB for the continuing audit. This is a practice BSA follows. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. So, uh, adding to the point, generally we can take it as the CB gets it AB, so it is AB, accreditation body is three to four weeks, generally practice is most of the certification body. And they have sub clauses or the smallest level integrity factors, as Mr. Uh, uh, Doctor has been explaining about. That is on the next level, we don't look upon, so we don't say more, more deeply over there unless and until a question is being raised. So, as in clause 5.3, uh, the organization roles and responsibilities is generally. Uh, being a factor, then what all, how it has been the roles, responsibility, conflict of interest, what all the designation is overlapping, or which of the designation is taking the multiple position, and what all the, uh, what all it falls under RASI, it will be looked upon. Uh, this is one of the audit practices generally we look upon. So, it will be in ISMS audit or the company's business level structure, it will become very clear how do we perform that one. This, this is one of the factors which we look upon. Uh, mostly. Next is about the documentation information of external origin. Uh, this is coming under clause number 7.53. Uh, consider that uh, in clause number 4, we uh, discuss about the statutory and legal requirements and of the organization or of land. But what are the factors which should be taken to the process? Consider that if you take HR as a process, HR process external origin uh, uh, document of external origin for HR process to meet their business or the process requirement. Uh, we have to start from taking from the Companies Act, uh, Factories Act, Child and Labor Act, and we also have to take the Employee Wages Act, PF Act. All these documents comes as an external origin. So this how this has been documented, how it has been referred. Otherwise, if we don't look upon this point, what would happen is that generally the company may not uh, regularly look upon the requirements of the statutory and regulatory factors, whereas it will be concentrating on the information security factor only. But at any point of time, class four requirement will not be met at all. So uh, as a part in always in audit practice, this uh, documentation of external origin its practice and implementation, how the process has been following is also being looked upon. If you take it in IT, consider that uh, more Microsoft services and other Red Hat and other factors are documents of external origin, by which a technical function of troubleshooting and fixing is being followed. So what all the documentation material, they may have it, but its reference and its usage for their work purpose, how it has been looked upon is being seen. Then about uh, fire and safety, especially in the admin level, uh, what is a 
in india we don't have a uh, fire marshal we have only the uh, in especially in the metropolitan level the municipality corporations fire mark uh, thing will be there their clearance certificate or that may be looked upon but that is a document of external origin and its attestation will be verified and in compliance especially on the statutory factor most of the uh, it related uh, documents which has been used for submission for the completion of the financial year report or other things and the signature uh, digital signature factors uh, i hope after 2005 or 7 the digital signature has been a mandatory so those records of uh, certificate validity uh, are the the one of the thing in compliance factor so these are the three process i am just explaining but there are other process where uh, documentation of external origin will be looked upon it is based on the business consider that if it has been a uh, uh, banking uh, basel law could be looked upon currently in india we basel 3 is been done and rbi is act has been looked upon other than the basel 4 how best is been done it is totally more about the foreign countries and for other financial industry institution in india it is the rbi is uh, a uh, financial act which has been looked upon as a document of external origin and for a pharmaceutical industry uh, especially the drugs and uh, control act uh, that has been verified as a documentation of external origin these are the general points or uh, documents which will be looked upon in during audit practice internal audit another factor of internal audit this is always a uh, debatable uh, question but generally what happens is that internal audit is not in most uh, companies it is been followed by an internal resource whereas uh, if you say take the mother of uh, standard iso older version of 9001 2000 version or if you refer to uh, 1911 uh, it says that uh, principle of impartiality and judgment should be followed by the an auditor it may be an internal auditor or external auditor so uh, the competency part is one of the factor which will be looked upon for the internal auditor aspect uh, during audit practice and his uh, identification factor so let me see how we identify that uh, this is to be qualified as a uh, minor or observation or an ofi and what are the classifications should be uh, is defined and how its uh, root cause analysis is being followed all these are the general audit uh, auditor level verification looked upon in the uh, internal audit uh, subject this is also one of the uh, core which should be looked during an audit practice in addition to uh, organization roles and documentation controls uh, i just touch basing one of the technical points most of the technical vulnerability uh, this is one of the question which i have faced uh during uh, a session uh, and client uh, he is not connecting to a mission to any of this external world uh, this happened uh, i will not be able to discuss further on the name of the session uh, the client is saying that he is not connecting his mission to any of the external world even to other than his local network and uh, none of the options for the person to work with the working in that mission is being uh, with external interface so what is the need for his patch management should be updated that what is what whereas you see microsoft as an oem it clearly says that its operating system is vulnerable I'll leave the case of red hat linux because linux has been more about monopoly about uh, how it has been mission dependent because it is more about the source uh, programming in the individual level in the system whereas microsoft is more about the uh, the kernel is not been built uh, it has been ultimately come and it has been rebuilt so microsoft products most of all of them have the technical vulnerability so patch management for them if even the machine if it is individually or isolatedly maintained also the possibility even if it is unknowingly or knowingly connected to a network it is becoming an issue so this kind of technical vulnerability other than looking upon the uh, what is a vapt result uh, the patch management factors are also been a uh, general audit concern which will be looked upon and antiviruses how it has been centrally managed and all so these are a few factors i am not looking upon or speaking around all the factor controls over here uh, some of the major factors which can affect and uh, uh, what is a attract and non conformity that 
Uh, and next one is about that generally an information security incident, a general practice which has been seen with most of the companies is that only IT related inform, uh, information security, uh, what is it, related issues are being considered as information security breach. Whereas uh, most people have to understand that standard is not looking only on to its level. It may be the way out, IT being the way out, it can be one of the way out for the information security leak or anything. Whereas uh, in if you say information security breach can be happened by the BGB data can be leaked. That is also one of the information security breach. It can be, it can be surely considered as an incident. And uh, the candidate joining and it, uh, what is the exit and internal formalities which has been followed if it is breach. If it is defined in the policy level or process level for an HR or about that being how we maintain the physical security and the tailgating, that is also this all are the considerable factor on information security incident and the qualification factors. Generally, it remains always as a discussion subject from the client factor and from the audit perspective. These are the few cases which I would like to, uh, what you see, take upon uh, at this uh, session. There are many uh, points, like in especially on the complaints factor. I don't know someone has asked about complaints. Complaints is a whole subject. Details can be detailed for hours, uh, whereas we are not touch basing on this point. And uh, coming to Q and A, uh, now I am open to uh, answer if at all any question. If it is related to this, uh, looking upon the audit practice on the higher level, or it's about some of the subjects which has been discussed earlier. Uh, we would, uh, I would rather ask or request everyone to speak up. If at all I know in an immediate point, I would be able to answer. So otherwise it would be a point of discussion and we can reach later. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kishore Hello. Hello, yeah. Are you able to hear, sir? I can hear you very much. Okay. And now today, can any CB certification body can issue a certificate uh, according to ISO 27002-2022 controls wise? Yeah, that's what I said. Till now, 27001 remains the certification standard. Oh. And most about 22002, which has been uh, it is released as you know uh, even every factor is being uh, i hope you are from some certification body yeah bsi bsi okay 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 uh, your name please if you don't mind so you may know that you will be always going through an experience exchange we will discuss about uh, many factors during the experience exchange uh, in at least once in a month once in a year or once in six months it has been strictly followed it by all the certification body and it has been uh, as you said uh, as for me also this is also a different different uh, questions which is coming or it will be uh, not a single answer which can be identified now unless and until it has been touched based on 27001 it still remains as 27001 as an auditing standard whereas it is a path or it is a recommendation which has been brought in to see some kind of gaps or streamlining should be done on 27001, which is uh, raised already raised as a client level issues or client level queries or some of the questions which is saying only just code of practice has already said. All these questions rise up. So, how we derive it or how do we converge it or track it? This all has been a discussion. Yeah, I would rather say 27001 remains as a certification process, whereas 22 version February, it is getting what is a uh, see how what are the possibles to bring it into as a security control uh, or as a uh, IT security control or information security control or cyber security control to practice and see a uh, least uh, amount of uh, gaps or issues which may come up. We are still are expected to see new versions of 2700. Yeah, that's about the question. Yeah, right. There is a uh, WhatsApp group in uh, Internet Auditors. Okay. There, it was said by a senior who on the board of the Technical Committee of the ISO okay. that new version 27001 2022 will be released somewhere in September, October. Yeah. So before that, six months, there is a ISO 27002 for the people to understand and be prepared. 
So that is a practice I think uh, ISO follows. That's why this is only uh, advanced guidance to the company to get prepared. So that is what we are also telling to all our clients. Right now, this is not applicable, but you get prepared. If any yeah, of the new company comes in. That's what the same I am answering. I am saying from the beginning. It is not one fine morning we cannot give surprise to people. No? So yeah, right. there is a already a hot discussion or debate which is happening among auditors. I may not be in your watch group, WhatsApp group, but in many things there are questions come. Unless and until points are thrown out, you see, unless and until someone speaks up, we will not going to uh, have a good result. That's what I feel so personally. So bring something over there, have a uh, debate or a discussion level, not in an argument level. And try to see what best can be adopted because 27 and 27001 came after 2005 version. Especially, they introduced the operational level capability and network and communication security as a criteria. So, 2005, uh, when 2005 was being upgraded to 2013 version, for around two okay. years, there was a continuous argument about the network and communication security itself. I don't know whether you can recollect it. Uh, people have different opinions, uh, they'll be yeah. there. So because during the process, all... there was also a very, for especially on the network and communication security and the operation level security, it was going for weeks and weeks and months and months from every part of the world, auditors have been arguing about it or debating about it. So it happens. So unless and until something is not shared, it is not going to be uh, both or reading or it is not going to be understood. Okay. That's Thank all you. I personally think. So. Any other questions or which I would like to say, it will be a short period and it's a normal and higher level, I would like to say, not about the nitty-gritty level. If someone is asking in nitty-gritty level, if I'm able to answer, I will, at this point I could, uh, or what is a not touch basing more deep inside. If any other further question and answer. Okay, I hope most of the people have been silent. Over to you, Manju. If you are there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Krishnamur. I, uh, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Ramesh Vengitraman to uh, for the closure remarks. Sure, sure. Thanks, Manju. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Krishna, thank you very much, Shreli. Uh, so nice of you to spare your time and then you know share your knowledge with this elite group. Really appreciate your uh, effort and time. And I do agree with you. It is not uh, an easy task to cover these kind of you know topics in a very short span of time. Uh, I think we all thoroughly enjoyed the kind of uh, knowledge what you shared with each one of us. Thank you very much once again. Looking forward to have some kind of uh, detailed discussion with you in one of the uh, forum going forward. Yeah. Sure. I am also waiting for. It. Yeah. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye. All